try. All right, sorry about the delay. We will try to figure this out. Okay, so my talk is called Sharing is Caring, Contributing to the Wagtail Ecosystem. Uh, my name is Andy Chosak. Uh, I'm a back-end web developer, and I'm a member of the Wagtail core team. Uh, I work for the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau, which you may know by its initials, uh, CFPB. Uh, as I'm a government employee, I have to put this disclaimer up here, which you can all read. Basically, that this presentation is uh, my own opinion and not representing the CFPB. Um, so this is the website of the CFPB, consumerfinance.gov, which, of course, uh, runs on Wagtail. Uh, we love Wagtail. We have a large uh, multidisciplinary team of uh, front-end front developers, back-end developers, UX designers, graphic designers, content specialists that all work together uh, on our website. And uh, our website is also open source um, on GitHub. So if you want to poke around and see uh, how a US government agency is using Wagtail, uh, you can see it uh, warts and all. We're not quite on uh, Wagtail 2.0 yet, but hopefully we will get there uh, very soon. So today what I want to talk about is um, the Wagtail package ecosystem. So first I want to give an overview of what, what I think of when I think of the Wagtail ecosystem. And then I want to talk about a few of the packages that the CFPB has contributed back in open source. And then I want to give a little bit of information and encouragement uh, to the rest of you to contribute your own packages uh, back to the community. Um, so first, talking a little bit about uh, the Wagtail ecosystem. So when I first started thinking about this talk, my motivation was mainly to talk about the software that we've written and open sourced and why these are cool plugins and packages to use for Wagtail. Um, but when I started thinking about it, uh, I realized, and today is another good demonstration of this, that you know, the ecosystem is more than just the code. The code is, is just sort of one piece of it. Uh, even if you had the best well-written CMS in the world, it would be nothing without the community behind it. Uh, so the ecosystem consists of the users, the people that are using Wagtail, you know, developers, the organizations that sponsor um, the, the development of, of Wagtail and, and conferences like this, uh, the, the greater community, that's people that are participating in the Slack channels and mailing lists. Um, and then over here on the right are some of the more tangible things. So there's the source code, documentation, blog posts, videos, and so on. And then, and then also third-party packages, uh, which is one I, what I want to talk mainly about today. Um, so you know, most of us in this room, I guess, have some experience with, with using Wagtail as part of a, a Django project. And people may be generally familiar with the Django package ecosystem. So these are things like um, the Django REST framework, for example. Um, there's a lot of uh, very popular uh, third-party plugins, which are not part of Django, but are, but are also frequently used uh, on Django sites. And so Wagtail also has um, quite a nice set of, of packages as well that um, people might not be familiar with or maybe only partially familiar with. And I, I want to demonstrate and briefly talk about some of these. So if hopefully this will work if I go over here, let's see. OK, so a couple of resources that I want to talk about. And I should say, I take no responsibility for any of these. These are just great resources that I think everybody should know about and take a look at. Um, so first is, is there's this uh, repository called Awesome Wagtail, uh, which is hosted by Springload, uh, which is a curated list of many, many um, both Python packages, but also other resources um, all about uh, Wagtail. There's a, there's a similar one of these for Awesome Django, but this is more Wagtail specific. Um, and you can see there's, there's a, 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 a large list of um, many, many useful packages um, that you might find when you're working on your Wagtail sites and you're thinking about, about doing something, uh, you know, whether it's about something about accessibility or maybe a plugin for Draft.js or um, things about static sites, whatever it is, you know, come to Awesome Wagtail and take a look and see, you know, maybe somebody else has already um, tried to do something similar. Uh, there's a lot of packages in here which, which are very useful. Um, this page also has, uh, toward the bottom, a number of things that are not packages, so some resources, blog posts, some of the recordings from uh, other Wagtail Space um, conference. Uh, very, very useful, lots of very useful 
uh, packages listed on this page. Another place to look is the Python package index or PyPI, um, which if people are not familiar with this, um, when you on your console you're installing things and you type you know pip install something, this is typically where that that comes from. Um, and if you go on PyPI and you search for Wagtail, you see there's 180 projects. Um, so of course, you know, the top result is Wagtail, but there's many, many other. And there's a large overlap here between the things that are here and that are on awesome Wagtail. Um, but uh, this is also, you know, a great place where you can come and see, um, you know, when things are updated, what their latest version is, look at the readme for packages and so on. Um, very recently, uh, I guess within the last few months or so, we've also gotten Wagtail added. If you come over here on the left, there's this framework drop down. And uh, it's very nice that now Wagtail is listed here as one of the frameworks you can search by. Now, unfortunately, we don't quite have too many um, packages which have included, there's a little bit of metadata that needs to get included in the, in the package to kind of get it to show up here. Um, but eventually, hopefully, we can get uh, more people using that metadata so that way um, you can search because, you know, you may potentially have packages that don't have Wagtail in their name. And so this is, uh, you know, just another way that you can find packages which people have published specifically for Wagtail. Uh, another place to look is um, GitHub topics. So uh, on GitHub, you can have re uh, repositories um, get tagged with topics. And so this is another place you can look and find um, open source Wagtail projects. And what's nice about this and what's a little bit different from the previous um, resources that I've mentioned is that this also includes um, Wagtail sites. So not just packages or plugins that people have made for Wagtail, but also full websites which are running on Wagtail. Um, so this is a nice place to look for examples of um, other people and, and full sites end to end that, that are using Wagtail. Uh, and then finally, there's a, another um, curated uh, list here on the Made with Wagtail site, um, which has a very nice browsable interface to find um, sites, many of which are not open source, that um, are built with Wagtail. And it's really uh, cool to be able to go in here and see just the d diversity of uses uh, that Wagtail is being used you know, for nonprofits, for, for industry, for all, all different kinds of users. And so I'd encourage you, if you if you make sites with Wagtail, to contribute them back to this, um, just as a you know demonstration of the growing, uh, you know the growing use and adoption of uh, of Wagtail. So um, so yeah, definitely check check these things out. And so the CFDB website is is one of these websites. Um, and I want to talk a little bit about some of the um, some of the things that we've contributed back to the in terms of our packages. Okay, so uh, I want to talk about three of our packages uh, that we published uh, in alphabetical order here, uh, Wagtail Flags, Inventory, and Sharing, and we have a couple of others that um, are kind of coming down the pike. These are all um, things that we, we had specific needs for things that we want out of Wagtail that weren't built into the core functionality, and we built them into these packages. And we found them very useful, and hopefully um, others will have interest and find them useful as well. Um, so the first one I want to talk about is Wagtail Flags. Uh, I have to give uh, most credit of this to, to Will Barton, one of my CFDB colleagues here. And this is a um, package that lets you use feature flags on your Wagtail sites. So people may or may not be familiar with the concept of feature flags. Also, sometimes people call these feature toggles. And the idea behind using feature flags is a way to more iteratively um, or continuously, rather, deploy code uh, to your site. Um, so instead of, let's say I have my site version one and I want to launch some new feature, what people will typically do is you'll have you know, version one of the code running without the feature, then you have version two of the code that has the feature implemented, and then you know, you deploy that, that new version of the code to put that feature into production. So you're kind of doing two things at once. You're both deploying the new version of the code and you're also turning the feature on to your users. So what feature flags let you do is, the idea is you, instead of doing both those things at once, you continuously deploy 
the, the code, but it's just hidden. It's sort of turned off to the public. So the code is out there, it's being deployed, but the path in the code that would expose that feature to your users is turned off behind a flag. And then the act of actually enabling that functionality for your users is just a feature toggle in code. It's just an on-off switch. So all the code is already sitting out there in production. It's just a matter of turning it on and off. And this is, this is really neat because um, it lets you do a couple of clever things. So for example, if you have a, a, a site with a lot of traffic, something you might want to do is deploy a new bit of functionality to only a small percentage of, of those users for, for some uh, testing. So you say, let me try this feature out on 1% of my users, and then you can kind of see how this works before you roll it out across the board. Um, you could also do it, you know, more complicated kind of A-B testing if you're trying to test out two different changes, potentially. Um, and so there's all sorts of things you might want to do, like uh, you might want to say, I want to have a feature that is scheduled to go live at a certain time. So you have it behind a flag, and then you have some logic in there that says, turn this flag on at this particular time. Or you might want to say, I only want users that are coming from the EU to you know, maybe get a uh, you know, certain cookie banner or something like that. So all sorts of different sort of segmentation you might want to do. So the, the idea behind this Wagtail Flags um, package is to um, allow you to do this kind of thing in Wagtail. So let me do a quick demo of how this would work. Um, so this is the repository on GitHub uh, CPB Wagtail Flags. And I'm going to just do a quick demo. This is the um, same Wagtail Bakery um, demo site that uh, Danielle uh, demoed earlier, which is, is really great. I totally agree with uh, doing quick prototypes and experimentation. So um, a very, very simple kind of thing we, want, we might want to do is, let's say we have our, our bakery um, e-commerce site, and we want to have a sale that we want to start. I'm working, I'm a developer, and I've been tasked with maybe developing some new, um, uh, some new content to put on the site about a sale that's going to be starting uh, in July. So I want to be able to um, share my draft content with the rest of my team and test out that it works and so on. Um, but I have to do all that before the content goes live um, for the end user. So the idea behind uh, uh, doing this with, with a, a flag is, so let's say I've got my, my template here. Let me make this a little bigger. Um, how do I do that? Right, so here's my template. And what I want to do is, in the header of my page, I want to, let's say, have a banner that says, you know, uh, there's a big sale on bread, you know, click here to, to my sale page. But I only want that banner to, um, to appear in certain uh, situations. So only if, let's say, my, my, July, flag, my July sale flag is set. Um, so what this Wagtail Flags package lets you do is it defines some template tags and some related things like that where you can sort of do some checks and say, only include, let's say, this, this snippet if the, if the flag is defined. And then when I'm in my um, Wagtail admin now under here under the settings, I have a new section for the Wagtail flags. Oh, no. Uh, shoot. I think I have to. Oh, that's embarrassing. Um, I'm sorry. Hold on in one minute. Let me just. Just, uh... Okay, cool. All right, so this is what the interface looks like. And um, what it lets you do is you can say, define a feature flag, and set different conditions for when it's enabled. So here I've got my flag July sale, but I don't want this to go live on the site until after July 1st. So if I come to my, my home page here, you know, I'm not going to see that, that, uh, that banner. But let's say I want to do a little bit of testing, and I want to say, you know, for the general public, I don't want this to go live until July, but I'm doing some testing, so I want to be able to see it. So I can add a condition that says, um, you know, if, if, let's say, the admin user is looking at the site, so now there's two conditions. 
for everybody July 1st, but also it's also enabled if the admin user is looking. Now, when I come to my site, I'll see this big sale on bread banner in the top. So, and there's all sorts of different configurations you can do. You can say, you know, you, there's a bunch of predefined conditions which are built into the package, and then you can also define your own. Um, and then there's a bunch of other different helpers as far as you might want to um, not have the sale page be accessible until the flag is, is on, all sorts of stuff like that. So um, we use this a lot for, for doing uh, sort of internal testing of features before, before they go live, and uh, we found it very useful. Hopefully others will as well. So that's Wagtail Flags. Okay, the next thing is, um, second thing I want to talk about is called Wagtail Inventory. So a bunch of people today have mentioned stream fields. We really love stream fields at CFPB. We use them a lot. Some would say we abuse them. Um, for those people who are not familiar with stream fields, uh, what you can do with them, the basic idea is that you can define these custom block types. So you can take the different base kind of blocks, like a text block or an image block and so on, and you can combine them together. So here, here's an example from the bakery demo repo, a block quote. So you're going to have a quote, and you want to be able to display the quote, and also who is the person who, you, uh, who said the quote, who you would attribute the quote to. And then you also are defining um, a custom template that when this block is rendered in my page, what it's supposed to look like. Um, another example is uh, an image block. So again, I might want to have an image, and the caption for the image, and then the attribution for, for where that image comes from. And so by defining these as a block, I'm now making a single unit that an editor on my site can stick into a page. So let me show you what this looks like. Um, OK, so again, here's the Wagtail inventory repo. And so here's, my, um, here's, here's what the code looks like in the, um, the bakery demo code base. Here's my block quote, right? And so on my page, um, it's going to look like this. So I've got my blog post, and now you know, I want to insert this nice quote about how great vegetables are um, on my diet. So that's what, what that block is going to look like. And then here's, here's what my image block is going to look like. I've got my delicious waffles, and then I've got my caption, and then I want to say this is a Creative Commons um, uh, uh, image. So in the... Um, in the editor, for those who are not familiar, it looks like this. So here you can see this, this whole highlighted part. This is one block that my Wagtail editor is going to see, a block quote type. And here they're going to enter my text and then my author. And then right below it here, you're going to see the image caption and attribution. And now this is all built into Wagtail. This is just custom blocks within stream fields. These are great. But now the problem that we ran into, and what I think others may have run into if you're using a lot of these, is it's very hard to do uh, queries or lookups of where you're using blocks on your site. And this is something that we've run into a lot, which is especially if you have a lot of blocks and you have a lot of pages, it's hard to figure out how many pages on my site am I using this block. Or am I using this combination of blocks? And let me give you a quick example where, where you might run into that. So in this case, I've got my image block. And you notice that there's no little red stars here because the way the bakery demo is written, the caption and attribution of this block are not required fields. But what you'll see is if you look at a page like here where I haven't defined I haven't given it a title or attribution to the image. This doesn't look great. I just see this little dash here. It doesn't have a graceful fallback. So somebody that's doing maybe a code audit or somebody might notice this and say, hey, wait a minute. You know, there's a problem with, with this. Um, and now you might say, all right, well, how many pages do we have where this, where this happens? And so you need a way to know, well, how many pages am I using this, this image, custom image block that I've defined? And Wagtail doesn't give you the way to do that out of the box. So this is what we've we built here in Wagtail Inventory. And so this is a new um, section here under Settings. 
This is called block inventory. And what this lets you do is it basically lets you search and filter and find all the pages that include or exclude some combination of blocks. So the blocks that are listed here include both the core Wagtail stream field blocks as well as the three that are defined in the bakery demo, the block quote, a heading block, and image block. And you can do something like say, okay, show me all of the pages on my site that have a block quote. In this case, there's only one. Or show me all of the pages on my site that have an image block. Um, or you could say, show me all of the pages that don't have an image block. Or you could do some combination. Um, so this is really useful. We have a lot, of, a lot of cases where we're thinking about changing a block. Like we might think to ourselves, oh, you know, why don't we put a border around our image block? And then we want to find all the pages on the site where that image block exists. And so this is very, very useful for, um, for, for finding that. Uh, we have some ideas for how to make this um, even more useful. You potentially might want to find um, stream field blocks that not only have, or pages rather, that not only have a block type, but also have a block type with a specific content in it. Um, there's also an open PR uh, against Wagtail, which would make some changes to the back end to make, uh, to make this what, the way we're doing it now a little bit easier. Um, but if you're doing things with stream fields, if you have a lot of these kind of blocks, um, check this out. We'd love to, to know what you think about it. All right, so that's Wagtail inventory. And then the last thing I want to the last one I want to talk about is called Wagtail sharing. Um, and this is um, easier sharing of Wagtail drafts. So a few people have alluded to this problem today. Uh, one, one issue with Wagtail right now is, so these are the options for page visibility. So if you want to publish a page in Wagtail and share it with somebody else, your choices are you can either make it public, you can make it public and put it behind a password, you can make it viewable within the Wagtail admin by anybody that logs into the Wagtail admin, or you can make it viewable within the admin and limit it to people within a group. We had, um, we had a, a, a use case where we often have content that needs to be reviewed by a large or changing or indeterminate group of, of people, similar to the, you know, we have, as a government agency, we have a certain amount of legal oversight that has to happen of our content. And so we need the ability to, given some draft content, send that out for review and approval. But we can't necessarily give everybody that's going to be reviewing the content a Wagtail login. Because there may be too many people. We don't want people to share a login. They may not have access to the system. Um, and so we wanted to build a way for people to be able to, um, to basically preview draft content in Wagtail. And that's what Wagtail sharing lets you do. So the idea, the idea behind Wagtail sharing is um, it lets you do two things which I think are really useful. So one thing you can do is, again, let's say I'm here at my bakery demo, and um, I, I'm thinking as the owner of this bakery that I want to add a new uh, line to my bakery, which is going to be gluten-free bread. And I want to make a new page on my site about this. And before publishing this, I want to send this out for review to people. But these are people that might not necessarily be able to log into my Wagtail site. So I need a way to basically expose this view draft functionality without, um, without somebody being logged in. So what Wagtail sharing lets you do is we have this concept of a sharing site, which again here is in the settings area where you can basically say, given, you know, in this case, the default Wagtail site, I want to expose this on a different host name. So here, I've just used sharing.localhost, but you could imagine you know, using some other subdomain of your site. And in this case, we would be using some kind of you know, network controls or so on to prevent, you know, to, to limit traffic to this domain only from, in our case, a certain internal network. But what this lets you do is now if I come to, um, so here on my page, if I try to go to this uh, page on the localhost, um, you know, here you see localhost breads, gluten-free bread, the page is not going to be found. But now if I access it via the sharing site, 
sharing that local host, then um, the page is, is accessible. So it basically is letting, kind of giving sort of another route to let you preview the draft content, even though um, you may not be logged into the Wagtail admin. Another thing you can do with this functionality is um, you can preview draft content on a page. So let's say I want to edit my web, to, you know, my homepage, and I want to, you know, change this, uh, change this text to say, you know, welcome to, you know, let's say, Wagtail space. Right, so I'm saving draft. So now somebody that's coming to my sharing site will see the draft content, whereas people that are coming to the, the main site will still see the regular content. Um, so we found this very useful as a way to, um, to, to preview draft content. And uh, another thing which um, Tom actually uh, kind of motivated us to do with this project is um, we have hooks now, so when you're previewing the content, um, you can kind of add arbitrary hooks to that. So this is sort of another example where um, when you're previewing the content, you might want to give the people some kind of markup tools so when they're reviewing a draft, they can, they can do markup. So this is also sort of built in on the uh, kind of the ability to add this to the, to the Wagtail sharing view. Okay, so that's Wagtail sharing. So those are our three, three packages. If anybody would love to look, you know, we love any feedback, people want to look at them. So now I want to talk about um, contributing your own packages. Why this, uh, oh. So why is this a good idea? Why would you maybe want to do this? So one, um, one potential reason is because it helps you to define the interface to your code. So a lot of times what will happen when we encounter a limitation in Wagtail is you, you just start hacking. You just start thinking about how you can modify your code and hook into it. And so if you think about it as a separate package um, and you, you know, kind of makes you be a little bit more um, disciplined about defining what the interface is going to be what are the limitations? How much do you want this to do? How do you want it to work? And that can be, that can be very useful. It can also help with testing because if you've got a, you know, kind of a, a strict set of functionality that your package is gonna be, be doing, it can help you sort of define tests against that in isolation maybe from the rest of your website. Um, especially, it's a little bit easier to test the isolated set of functionality against multiple versions of Wagtail. Um, that's something that we've done a lot. And then, of course, also sharing with and getting feedback um, from the community. So, um, of course, all this is easier said than done. So how do you actually do this? Um, main thing I want to suggest is, is copying, getting inspiration from other existing packages. Um, so when we you know, first started doing this, I didn't have a lot of experience at all with publishing Python packages or knowing how to do that. And just looking at um, other examples that are out there um, can be really useful. So just last thing I'll show really quick. Um, so here's, here's an example of a great package, the Wagtail two-factor authentication. This is back on the PyPI, the Python package index site. Um, and you, know, you can read and say, oh, this, you know, this looks like a great package. And I know if I type pip install Wagtail 2FA, this will get installed. But if I want to make my own package, um, you know, how, how do I know how to do this? So when code is open source like this, you know, you can go to the repo, like in this case, this is the setup.py file, and just look and see, you know, how, how other people are doing that. Look at our code, look at other packages that are out there. And this can be really useful. Just copy, you know, just, just play around. Um, the documentation for Python packaging is really quite, um, you know, not, not that, that hard to understand. And, um, we definitely have learned a lot just by looking out there at, at others um, and trying to, um, you know, look at their documentation, look at their examples can be, can be really, um, really useful. And another thing to think about is, of course, um, you know, write good documentation if you can to give people um, instructions on how to use your package. Um, screenshots are definitely always appreciated, uh, you know, especially for 
changes that affect the UI to give somebody an idea for um, you know, what it's going to look like. And then um, you know, other things to think about are just uh, you know, choose a good license for your, uh, for your package. Think about you know, releasing it open source if you can. And then finally, of course, submit a PR to the awesome Webtail so everybody can use your package and uh, give feedback, and we can all make each other's code better. So that's it. Thank you very much. And please check out our stuff and give us issues and pull requests. If you want. Any questions? Um, these look like some really great packages. I'm excited to know about them. And they definitely solve some problems that I've been experiencing. I'm curious if Wagtail Flags supports Django applications without Wagtail. That, yeah, that's a great question. We were just talking about it. And we've actually had a, somebody felt an issue against the repo asking that. Um, we would like to make some changes to that repo, either to make it able where you can install it with Wagtail as an optional dependency, or potentially splitting out the, the kind of more Python Django pieces from the Wagtail specific. Yeah. Uh, also about Wagtail flags. <coughs> that requires a constant schema. If you're going to roll out code for a feature, the schema with the flag enabled and without it have to be the same. You're talking about the model schema? Yes. 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 The models. Yeah. yes. So that's, that's a good question. Um, right. So typically, typically a good pattern or one that we followed is to try to make your changes additive. So if you've got a model, try to add the new field, let's say, add the code behind the flag that refers to the new field, then wait until you've switched over to using the new field before you remove the old field. So yeah, yes, you do have to kind of make sure everything is there to support both the on and off version of the code at the same time. Do you, do you ever sort of unflag a feature and return it to mainline? Return it to? Remember, a feature is enabled by a flag in this workflow we've talked about. Do you ever sort of say, we're going to promote this feature into not being controlled by a flag? Yes, typically that's what we'll do, is we'll add, we'll add the feature, we'll add the code for the feature, then we'll, we'll turn it on in production, and then we'll have a cleanup PR that goes in and removes the reference to the flag, just to keep it from hanging around forever. Right. Thanks. I'd like, uh, anyways, I lost.